Hello students, I am your teacher, Master Sheikh Muhammad Zubair. Today we are going to study the third chapter in Civics, Features of the Constitution. Introduction In the last two lessons, we studied how our constitution was made. We studied its preamble and understood terms like Sovereign State Socialist State Secular State Democratic State and Republic State The goals expressed in the preamble are the characteristic features of our constitution as well. Apart from these, the constitution also has other features. Let's learn the first in detail. The first one is federalism. One of the most important features of our constitution is the federal system. In countries with large territories or huge populations, government is run by a federal system. Ruling a large territory from a single capital city is not only difficult but also may lead to the neglect of some far-flung areas. People residing there cannot participate in the affairs of the government, therefore governments function at two levels in a federation. The government at the center carries out the task like defense of the entire country, foreign policy, establishing peace, etc. It is also called as union government or federal government. It carries out the administration of the entire country. The government that oversees the administration of the region that we live in is called state government. It looks after the administration of a particular state, for example, Government of the Maharashtra looks after the administration of the state of Maharashtra. This is a picture of the union government and state government. Let's study about the separation of powers. The constitution has divided the subjects for making laws between the union government and the state governments. Let us see which government is entrusted with what subjects. Our constitution has given three lists of various subjects. Let us learn more about the three list. The first one is union list. It contains 97 subjects on which the union government make laws. Second is the state list which contains 66 subjects. Here the state government make laws. Lastly concurrent list. Here 47 subjects are included and it is made by both state government and the union government. Now let us take the subjects which are included in the union government or union list. Example, defense, foreign relations, war and peace, currency, international trade. Now let's see the subjects included in the state list. Agriculture, law and order, local government, health, prison, 
administration. Lastly, we will see the subjects which are included in the concurrent list. Employment, environment, education, personal law, economic planning and social planning. Now we will study about the Union Territories. In India, there is a Union Government, 28 State Governments and 9 Union Territories. The Union Government controls the Union Territories. Following are the 9 Union Territories. New Delhi, Daman and Diu, Puducherry, Chandigarh, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh and Lakshadweep. Parliamentary System of Government The Indian Constitution has provided for a parliamentary system of government. In such a system, the parliament, that is, the legislature, has highest decision-making power. Indian parliament includes the president, Lok Sabha, or the House of the People, and Rajya Sabha, or the Council of States. The Council of Ministers that runs the administration emerges from the Lok Sabha and is answerable to Lok Sabha for all its decisions. In parliamentary democracy, the discussion and debates that take place in the parliament have great significance or importance. Now let's learn about Indian judiciary. The Indian Constitution has created an independent judiciary. The disputes that cannot be resolved mutually are referred to the judiciary. The court hears both the contesting parties look into the injustice, if any, and give its judgment. This has to be done impartially. The Constitution has made several provisions to ensure that the judiciary remains more and more independent. For example, judges are appointed by the President and not by the government. It is not easy to remove the judges from their office. Now we study about single citizenship. The Indian constitution has granted a single citizenship to all Indians, that is Indian citizenship. Let's learn more about the process of amending the constitution. There comes up a need to make changes or amendments in the provision of constitution due to changing circumstances. By amendments it means changes or to change. But frequent amendments to the constitution may lead to a situation of instability. The procedure for amendment or change is specified in the constitution itself so as to ensure that an amendment is made only after giving it a careful consideration. The procedure for amendment in the constitution is unique. It is neither too difficult nor too easy. More scope has been provided for giving more consideration and thought to important amendments. 
The procedure is also flexible to ensure that general amendments can be brought about easily. Lastly, we learn about election commission. You must have read about election commission in the newspapers. Since India has adopted a democratic form of government, people have to elect their representatives periodically. For this, the elections have to be conducted in a free and fair atmosphere. Only then will the citizens be able to elect a candidate of their choice without any fear or pressure. If the government were to conduct elections, there might be no guarantee of such free, fair and just atmosphere for the elections. Hence, the constitution has entrusted the responsibility of conducting elections to an independent missionary. Children, this is a short exercise for you to do at home. You are supposed to do it by your own self. Write it down in your notebooks and keep it ready. Once the school reopens, the respective subject teachers will take your notebooks for correction. I hope by this presentation, the lesson has come very easy to you. Thank you children and God bless.